And welcome, boys and girls, to yet another exciting adventure of the cleverly titled Ryan Dixon Show. Uh, I am Ryan Dixon. Uh, it is a show, and so welcome once again. Uh, <laughs> so this show's slowly kind of taking form uh, here on Voluntary mm -hmm. Virtues Network. Uh, joining me in studio this evening, of course, uh, Leland, as always, uh, the the lovely and talented Mr. Leland Freeman. Leland, say hello to the boys and girls. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> And it uh, should be an interesting show because uh, this evening, sitting in the, the, the guest seat, uh, joining us tonight, uh, Miss Abby Woodrick. Miss Abby Woodrick, say hello. Hello. And uh, Abby, who, uh, who the hell are you? That's a very open-ended question. I know, it's got kind of a sort of a philosophical sort of, not, not in a philosophical <laughs> sense. I'm, just, I'm not going to dive okay. in quite, the, quite that hard that early. But, yeah, um, please don't. Uh, you know, if we uh, were to assign you a title, uh, we wouldn't say that you were the uh, author of a book of some sort. We wouldn't say that uh, you were the director of uh, a film of some sort. We would, however, say that uh, you uh, you are uh, my ex, actually, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, and I guess a good friend of mine yeah, as well. Yeah, and so uh, we've been dealing with each other's shit for, for a couple of years. Yeah, for a couple of years now. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, all my life. I have heard, uh, you know, Ryan. For a smart guy, you do some really dumb shit sometimes. Um, I and whether Is or this not one of the dumb things. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I having me on. Yeah. I am trying <laughs> to sort out if this is a moment of uh, brilliance on my part. Uh, or, one of or just one of of absolute uh, dumbassery. <laughs> Uh, as I like to uh, refer to it, and I'm 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 prone to both, uh, not by you know any intention or anything, but I just kind of bumble about in the world, and um, uh, occasionally one or the other will occur. Uh, so, but I thought uh, we were talking the other night, and I thought that it might be um, make for an interesting dialogue uh, to bring you in and sit down, and uh, the three of us have a grand powwow of the sorts. Uh, about uh, life and liberty and uh, any number of uh, things going on in the world today. Um, oh my god, the AC vent just kicked on. They actually do turn that on down here. Um, to paint the picture for uh, anybody who hasn't uh, tuned in before, uh, it is stiflingly hot down in this uh, little underground... Uh, uh, haunted dungeon. Haunted <laughs> dungeon. Yeah, it's uh, it's questionably haunted. We're not entirely sure just yet whether or not we have it a... probably um, is. It, it's it's questionable. Uh, there are some things that go bump in the night. We had that happen last time mm -hmm. uh, we were on. And Should set up some like EVPs, like you know, at night when there's no one here, and then check them in the morning and see what's on the recordings. You know, like I, I don't know. Uh, what was the movie know, that they did that? What was like the, paranormal? We activity? saw that. Was it paranormal? Paranormal activity. activity. One of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, terrible film. Um, Horrible. It was. I. It was. How uh, did it make a hundred million? <laughs> I thought we'd start out with with something that uh, we could we could get along with Leland. Of course, uh, you are you are a uh, man of the cinema. Uh, you enjoy your, your your moving pictures, as it were. Um, I am going to I am going to pay you uh, a whole uh, shiny dollar uh, this Ooh. evening, uh, a whole dollar, uh, if we can get through the whole night without one reference to the Blues Brothers. Good luck. Well, uh, you already had the reference. No, no, I just I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, anything kind of goes. I mean, it's a late night show. This is, uh, the, uh, now Thursday, July 17th broadcast of the Ryan Dixon show. Of course, uh, broadcasting Eastern midnight until two in the morning. Uh, so, uh, what are you doing up? Um, but, uh, other than listening to this here on Voluntary Virtues Network, right? Uh, so we're going to get into a number of different topics. There's a lot of different weird things. Of course, I just wrapped up uh, the crypto show uh, over on another network, and uh, we, we finished that all up uh, with my good friend Jonathan Rumian. And so now, shifting gears, coming into uh, a, a second uh, show and uh, one without breaks, which uh, I need to. We need to see if we can organize some kind of because don't don't other uh, some of the other podcasts. I mean, they'll they've got like a five minute. Between at top of hour or something like that. I mean, Maybe you've seen I don't them, know. 
I know, I think Rogan does, doesn't he? I think, but I've heard his, like, on weekends on Sirius. So I haven't heard, like, his actual podcast to know if he takes breaks or not. I would I well, check I mean, that out. I would imagine I'm sure they do. To. You can't ask somebody to just sit still after, you know, for two hours. I don't think they but, sit still, though. Um, He's got a big studio. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I imagine you've got to get up at some point. Like, right, you know, at somewhere, uh, go grab water or whatever. You would make a terrible astronaut. <laughs> That's why I keep... No, I would. That's why I, I stay firmly planted here. I did, Yeah, you'd be walking around. I did briefly consider um, just kind of bumbling about in the, in the exactly. thing, just floating. They're just like sit a, back down. Hold no, on a minute. I want some ice cream. Hold on. I left my tang back in the bathroom. Well, you know they all <laughs> Which actually reminds me of a joke. i got to tell you this one. Uh, did I, I don't know if you, if you saw this one. This is a joke I came up with the other day. No. Uh, what is it uh, that astronauts listen to in space? You, you got nothing? No? You ready for this? Oh, gosh. Wu, Wu no. Tang. Astronauts in space oh, listen. This, this is, this oh. is throwing me off because the weight. Yeah. They listen to Wu Tang because astronauts yeah, and Wu Tang. And, yeah. um, if you have to explain it, it's not that good. <laughs> You, you know they have to. You know they have to wear diapers because they're on the launch pad for about six hours. Is that right? Yeah. It, it seems so inefficient. I think that. It, I mean, as far as, and I and I find it interesting. This is just going to be ADD all over again. I can feel it already. Um, but I do find it uh, interesting that once NASA kind of got out of the way, of course, um, all of a sudden the private companies come forward and uh, are saying, hey, we're going to colonize Mars, and, you know, hey, we're Red Bull, and we're going to take a guy to the edge of space and then just drop him back to the Earth and, you know, all these different things. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I mean, the, the market's always being able to innovate and having incentive to innovate and kind of uh, create bigger and better and bolder things, right? I take it you're a big fan of Elon Musk. Um, I go back and forth. To be honest with you, well, the, can, I, can I go on a little bit about Elon? So, we, you, yeah, absolutely, you I, got the floor. Elon is the guy that made the only electric car that makes any sense, the Tesla, where you have a decent amount of range, and the company's actually profitable. They really don't take any incentives. In fact, they have this clever thing with, with uh, energy credits where they actually sell to auto, other automakers mm-hmm. because they make vehicles that don't meet this mile per hour uh, quota. But the fact that their technology works, his original background is he made PayPal. And then his other company, SpaceX, is one of the few... Oh, that's right. He was behind... Okay, SpaceX. SpaceX right, yeah. right. Um, and, what the, and what he's doing is the refilling uh, of the space station. Yeah, the, SpaceX was actually kind of an interesting endeavor, and I mean, I guess still is. Um, the Some of the work that they're doing, um, it's... It's a it's a fascinating. If you haven't looked into it, check it out. Um, of course, just more examples of how kind of the market uh, ends up always, uh, I guess, innovating and advancing things um, at a far swifter pace uh, than than government ever does. Um, I imagine if you know uh, Coca Cola had been allowed into um, you know the space race, um, they, they probably would have. Uh, you know, won that one, which of course <laughs> then brings us into uh, you know, did we ever actually land on the moon and uh, which uh, is another... Stanley Cooper's going to come up a lot tonight, isn't he? I, you know, once we bring that up, yeah. Um, the I've never really... I, I always thought it was kind of a nutty idea, this, this notion that, no, we never landed on the moon, right? And then you examine... I mean, when you, when you lend an ear to the, um, the people that... You know, the contrarians, I guess. Uh, the conspiracy theorists, the whatever... Some of the times, and not all the time, but some of the times, they make a damn compelling case. Um, that uh, was it. Kubrick's Odyssey was that the the work that I'm thinking so of. The first one or the second one. <clears throat> yeah, Kubrick's mm-hmm. Odyssey, and they go into all this different stuff about um, the what was the predecessor to the green screen? It was the, the front projection. Front screen. projection screen, right? Uh, which was like all these glass beads perfectly aligned, and you you know projected the image and. Well, from a scientific standpoint, with regards to things on the moon, you have this big, huge craft with all this fuel to get it up to, what is it, 25,000 miles per hour to get it to break Earth's orbit, get to the moon, land, but the lander is a lot smaller, has a lot less fuel to get down to zero, the land, and then get it back mm-hmm. up to speed, and the command service module has a lot less fuel to get it 
to break Earth's, uh, excuse me, break the moon's orbit and then go back to the Earth, and then the whole thing with the whole Van Allen belt. Um, but the thing that always gets me is that the Russians would have to be in it too, because they would have called it mm -hmm. big time. So, and, well, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Um, and it, collusion uh, amongst nations is not entirely well, the fact that we haven't left Earth uh, lower Earth orbit since with the manned craft is kind of questionable. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was uh, the article that came out a while back, actually not terribly, too terribly long ago, about um, the, was it the, it was in Amsterdam, wasn't it? Uh, where, I forget, I forget the specifics of the story, but essentially uh, Neil Armstrong comes back and he's going around like the Easter Bunny handing out moon rocks, right? And one of them is to either you know, some elites in Amsterdam or something of this ilk, and it ends up in the museum, and scientists only recently come forward and said, oh, right, um, little something about that, uh, that's petrified wood. Did you see this? Mm -hmm. This is an yeah, actual thing. Yeah, yeah, he came back, and they go, that's so not... Was... And the scientists yeah. came around, and they were like, uh, about the moon rock, uh, that's, that's, that's a... Tr uh... <laughs> So, I mean, which kind of lends it further credibility. And I like to go over the topic sometimes just as a point of musing because I, and, and maybe this shows um, perhaps my short-sightedness. Maybe this shows, uh, you know, kind of my gullibility or whatever. But I like going over it because to me it seems like whether he, whether we did or not, whether he did or not, right, not so much we, I didn't, go up there with him. It's not like I gave him a push. Um, the uh, I wasn't out on the launch pad like, bring it in. Um, <laughs> whether he did or not, I guess is somewhat superfluous. Like, it doesn't really change. I mean, if they came out and they said, yeah, that was a big, that was a big Well, why did Apollo 13 do. happen? Was it for a ratings boost of television? Because no I, one was watching the moon landings anymore? If, if that's the case? I mean, I it, no. What? I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly, he stumped, he stumped me. But um, you guys you guys know what Apollo 13 is. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's when they sent Tom Hanks to the moon, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just was there. But he never made it to the moon because the thing exploded. Yeah, he died. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. he didn't die. He didn't die. They actually survived. No, that was George Clooney that died. Was it? In space. What? Oh, George. yeah, that, that movie. What, in Gravity? Yeah, I'm just taking every movie that has that ever been space in space, in and I'm, yeah. Uh, I think it was Harrison, well, then he, then he Harrison came, Ford killed him. He, he came back to life as a ghost in that movie. Yeah, yeah that's he what came it was. back. Yeah, that's right. He came back as a ghost. And was it, um, but uh, I, like going, I like going over the moon landing thing just for yucks, because I, I do think it's kind of, to me, it seems like it would be inconsequential. And I don't know, maybe there's some vast ripple effect that occurs if... Uh, well, the other thing is the original tapes were missing, too, for the longest time. If they ever came back and said, oh, we didn't, you know, land on the moon, I, d I don't see, like, like what, I mean, like, is Russia going to, you know, like, nuke us then, or I don't, you know what I mean? I don't see any major, uh, and maybe there is something, I don't well, know. Well, their moon rockets exploded before they even got past the first stage, and that was held for, from public information for about 20 years. Hmm. I don't know. The M1 rockets. See, I haven't I haven't paid that much attention to it. That's what I mean. Is is it's uh, it's fun to kind of go on about and listen to the different stories. And perspectives. We ended up we ended up with the better set of of Nazi rocket scientists after World War II because mm -hmm. our entire moon program was Werner von Braun's, and he made this very very eloquent. Oh, we just beat them in bigger, the bidding process. Bigger, right? less and bigger rockets versus. The N1 had 30 small rockets, and that was impossible to keep calibrated, so they exploded. Which, of course, you know, gets into all the uh, various uh, things about... Um, how am I... My thing says it's got... It's charging, but it's at 8%. I don't even know how that's possible. Is that could turn into an issue a little bit later. It's charging, it's, but... Yeah. It's, I'm going to keep an eye on that, uh, because if that goes dead, then... Um, this is going to be a, you know, screeching. I'm going to have to lap up with the, one of the two of you. You can um, come sit in my lap. Yeah, I'll just come sit in your lap. How about All that? Right. That works. Um, 
but uh, so that's kind of a I don't know it's kind of a fun one to to muse and kind of go over. Um, but uh, speaking of of uh, you know and doing a little bit of a, a gear change here. Speaking of different uh, means of transport and and government and the such. Uh, this article, uh, which came out uh, yesterday, I guess, uh, FBI brands autonomous cars potential lethal weapons. Um, and the summary basically is that the U.S. law enforcement is saying that uh, autonomous cars could pose a severe risk to public safety and become another weapon in criminal arsenals, um, which I think to me kind of goes to, it kind of uh, hits on indicates to me I guess my because I've had a since they came out I've been I've been fully behind uh, and supportive of this idea of um, the whole autonomous car thing um, largely because and 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 primarily uh, for a slightly different reason than most people is I like the idea that you have all these courts right uh, within the state that are just traffic courts they're just you know you were speeding and you didn't use your turn signal and you didn't come to a complete stop and, and they're classy misdemeanors yeah and mm -hmm. they just and it's just it's just a hamburger you know kind of production uh, scale and it's all a bunch of absolute crap because there's never uh, there's never a, a victim you never have any of this stuff and they just you know they just turn people in they, you know you come in and okay that's a hundred dollars next a hundred dollars next right all day right. long um, but I like this capacity that you have this um, autonomous vehicle, uh, which throws this huge wrench in at least that section of the system. Um, you know, I mean, can you personally be fined for you know uh, the actions of your your like your blender or your toaster oven? Well, they're I don't... trying to already uh, with the red light cameras. <laughs> That's the owner of the vehicle. It becomes a civil citation, regardless mm -hmm. if you're actually driving it or not. And some of our friends of ours have actually challenged these red light cameras, mm -hmm. saying that they're inaccurate and that they weren't even driving the vehicle at the time. And mm -hmm. so, and the other thing is, is that when they make it a civil citation, they make it say, "Oh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a fine against a piece of property versus the individual, so the property can't fight in the court, so you have no recourse," which is horse mm -hmm. hockey, in my opinion. Well, I mean, the state is horse hockey, in my opinion. Um, but uh, but I do I, I do gravitate towards these things that come along that have this capacity to um, just completely uh, upturn and 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 cause this huge mess uh, for the existing models. And so you know, all these traffic court things and 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 so on. I think that that causes a huge problem for them. Um, because you're probably not going to be speeding if you know you just set the car to you know uh, I mean most of the GPS even nowadays even knows um, you know what the what posted the speed, speed limits are. are in the area. That's how yeah. they factor how long it's going to take you to get from point A to point B. Right. They say what are the posted speed limits? Uh, you know, where are where's the traffic at? And then they you know calculate and input it all in. Well, but if the car is driving. And you're just, you know, you're doing the speed limit anyway, uh, you know, and it's coming to complete stops at stoplights, it's using the turn signals, so on and so forth, then it seems to uh, rob the state of, I mean, I don't know how much revenue, uh, just like the state of Texas alone, for example, uh, generates from these things, but I absolutely love that. Uh, I love the capacity that, that these could be, this could be something that uh, you buy one of these cars and that's the last traffic stop that you ever get involved in. And these cars are somewhat <coughs> autonomous already. I mean, a lot of them have the ability to park themselves mm -hmm. and they also have the ability to... Well, yeah, we've been the, looking... The laser at... cruise control along with the uh, with the emergency braking and, mm -hmm. and Nissan yeah, has this... Volvo's got that. Infinity's, uh, Nissan's Infinity division has that. also has lane departure prevent, which can actually steer the car slightly back in. It has cameras and is that sensors. Is that Nissan? That's Nissan. No kidding. Yeah, and Nissan's Infinity Luxury Division. Which well, I knew like Lexus was Toyota, for example, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But and I Acura know. Is, is Honda, so they're bulletproof uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to reliability. Um, well, and we've been looking at uh, actually um, Land Rover. Uh, they've got that little um, the Evo. Know, the Evo, right? I mean, we've both been kind of talking about that vehicle, um, which is I was kind of amazed with some of the stuff. The park thing, like it'll. Pair part for you and it'll actually um, 
what, pull out of the spot now, right? Yeah, like can pull out. Yeah, it can pull you out of the parking spot. Like it'll park for you and then take you out of there. And I guess BMW has like a valet thing that, that it, I in one of their cars now? I think that was... I think that was Audi that had that. Was it Audi? I think it was Audi that had yeah. the um, yeah, where like it would go and park itself or something like that. That's some Batman type of shit right there. It's just weird that Lexus ended up pulling that out of their flagship LS with the latest refresh, from my understanding, which was and they had that oh about eight years ago, and that was actually pretty cool technology. I don't know why they would yank that out. <coughs> and of course, like I said, with Infinity with their lane departure prevent, which. What it does is it has cameras and it mm. sees the stripes in the road, and so it's, it's you know, when you start to drift, it sounds an alarm to the driver, and then if the driver doesn't respond, it actually pulls it back in. And of course, mm. most cars with yeah. laser cruise control, which they're able to sense the front of the car uh, via radar or laser or a beaconing system, it's able to even uh, hit the brakes if the driver's not, not aware of it. Yeah, I've seen that. It's um. It's fascinating to me to think that we live in an age now where, I mean, the kids that are being born today, for example, um, they might never know uh, what it is to drive one's own vehicle. Wow. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. It's an interesting thought. I mean, as, as long as we've had this, I mean, man, you know, we, we haven't had an automated, a fully automated system of transport, really. I mean... As much as uh, you know, autopilot does in airplanes, for example, uh, you know, there's still some human capacity to it, and and you've got a pilot's license, right? I mean, know. well, well, the thing of autopilot is, is that it, there's various degrees of of sophistication. Uh, there's uh, known as a, a class, uh, I think it's two or three approaches where. Uh, some really, really, really high-end jetliners, they have the ability to auto-throttle and flare the airplanes, but mo all, pretty much all pilots never use that it just mm -hmm. because there's the human factor. And when these fly-by-wire systems first came out in civilian aircraft, they had in the military since the 70s, mm -hmm. mainly because they designed airplanes that were aerodynamically unstable, either for stealth purposes or to make it more maneuverable, so you had to have a computer system fly it. The first. I'm sure some of it had something to do with Operation Northwoods, but. Well, anyway, the first <laughs> airliner that had a fly-by-wire system, the Airbus A320, there were a number of accidents because the, the computer system would just get completely scrambled, and so the plane would do the exact opposite of what the pilot would do. And getting back to what you were saying, Ryan, about people not knowing how to drive a car, most uh, manual transmissions are, are are going the way of the dodo as well mm -hmm. as the throttle cable. Pretty much every car now has an electronic mm -hmm. throttle or electric steering where you don't have a direct connection between the, the, the gas pedal or the steering wheel anymore. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. getting to that point. But it's, it's, it's interesting to me to think that, because I do, I, I tend to look at where we're at now and get a very distinct sense of primitivism um, mm -hmm. about where we're at. Uh, you know, I look at the technologies that are coming out now, and I look at the potential behind them. I mean, just for example, we take the the Bitcoin thing, this whole solving of the Byzantine generals problem, right? This I, this concept of, you know, for and for those not familiar, I guess it's the way it's been explained to me anyway, um, is you know, if you imagine you have sort of a, a city that has to lay siege on another city, and to determine how and where you're going to attack. Uh, you have to pass that information from hand to hand to hand to hand. But how do you go about doing that when there are spies living amongst you in the city, right? And so Satoshi Nakamoto comes along, solves the problem, this math problem is solved, and uh, currency, a form of, of exchange and store of wealth and so forth, is built upon it. Um, but that's only one potential application for that, that mathematical uh you know, uh, Pandora's box that was opened, or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> um, there's all these different things that can be done with it, as we see with colored coins and so on and so forth. And so to me, I mean, I look at that, and then I look at um, these other technologies that are coming out, uh, or that are not even coming out, I guess, that are merging, right? 
uh, because I mean it's not none of this is new technology with the driverless car it's just they said well we can take the laser read we can take GPS we can take cameras and you know all this stuff and we can blend it all together slap it in a car and uh, away we go well the thing is it can also make economic sense I mean versus this billion dollar rail that they're trying to ram down our throats uh, well, no, I heard it, 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 it's for nine miles, and the thing is, I did the math. It comes out to almost two thousand dollars an inch to build this thing, and breaking it down from yeah. nine miles to. to and that's doing, the yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the efficacy of government. Um, you know, just uh, working hard and, and working it's, strong. It's right? fixed mm -hmm. capacity, and it's a fixed guideway. Versus you have these autonomous cars, which mm -hmm. uh, with you were going to talk about thorium later in the show. Yeah, I wanted to get to that uh, in a little bit, but the this whole concept, I mean, the FBI sees it, right? And they say, oh, yeah, this could be uh, a potential uh, lethal weapon, which is a brilliant statement from the get, right? It's a brilliant statement from the get-go that it could be a potential lethal weapon. Uh, you know, I mean, but so could my hands. Uh, so could my shoelaces. So could uh, two tablespoons of water. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so to say, that, oh, it could be a potential lethal weapon. Like it didn't, you know what I mean? Like why, why are you saying it to begin with? Um, and then, uh, <coughs> so it, but it also just kind of shows the um, sort of, I guess, madness and paranoia and whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um, within the ranks. Because, uh, yeah, maybe uh, potentially, sure, but so could anything else, and. You know, it also disregards that that the majority of people. I mean, there's a video that they have here, right? And um, you know, they're talking about, uh, well, this is great. I can spend more time with my kid, and you know, we can talk about, you know, how is school and da 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 da. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and and so forth. Like, you know, they don't. Like, that's what majority of people are going to do with it. They're going to take a nap. Uh, they're going to read a book. They're going to, you know, apply their makeup and do their hair. They're going to, you know, on and on and on, right? Um, and they they have this concern that, uh, you know, it's just going to be uh, just uh, death on wheels, Armageddon. Uh, the whole city streets uh, will suddenly become demolition derby, and it's the uh, end of, of humanity and society. Didn't they say the same thing about concealed carry when it was? They said the same thing about everything. They said the mm -hmm. same thing about, you know, uh, so I don't know. I mean, the fact that they're saying, like, it could be, it lends to my thinking that this is a, a wonderful good uh, over everything else. Um, you know, when when the government agencies come out and go, oh, you know, we're afraid of this, uh, it makes me think, um, you know, well, then maybe there's something to it. Maybe this is, is something worth the while. But... Um, I would, you know, I'd love to have something like that. Now, here's a question. Do you think that... Is it related? Well, it is related. <laughs> well, here, here, here's something to think about. Are we going to eventually lose the ability to actually drive the cars ourselves? Like, for example, Dodge has this mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful muscle car, the fastest muscle car ever made, the Dodge Challenger coming up with 707 horsepower. If you have these things being autonomous, they'll say, well, why do you need a car that goes 0 to 60 in... 3.9 seconds when 5 is, is plenty. And also the <coughs> other thing, which is something to think about, can you be kidnapped in this car? Can like, the car example, kidnap well, you? Well, here, here, here's, something, here's, here's something to think about, because you ever, have you ever watched those videos of... Kidnap of of car nap. Car, car, uh, car theft <laughs> stings, where, car they up, where they set up a car, where they set mm -hmm. up a camera in this car, and the thief gets in, and he starts driving the car, and then the door is locked, and it comes to a stop, and the guy can't get out, and they're arrested... Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the okay. thing. You know, that's that's you know doing good, good catching car thieves. But could they do that to anybody's car if they felt that you were a threat? That they could hack into your system, lock the doors, and drive to some secret place, and then off you. Uh, you know, I mean, anything's anything's possible, yeah. right? Um, yeah, there's potential. For... <laughs> but I think it's it boils down to sort of that um, that fork in the road that I kind of talk about between do you go primitivist and, and sort of Luddite, uh, you know, where you shun and ban all technologies and technology is bad and evil, right? Or do you do you get involved in sort of that um, that sort of arms race of technology? Which is which is what it is. I mean that's that's what's happening with uh, the Bitcoin thing, for example, right now. Um, you know, I mean it's it's kind of a it's a race between, you know, can we 
develop these things to be secure enough and private enough and fast enough and, and you know big enough and bold enough and so forth. Uh, meanwhile, while they're trying to uh, you know kind of circumvent that and, and work to uh, maintain control uh, for these you know kind of globalist banker types, right? Um, I don't know. Do you want one, Abby? The driverless car. A driverless car? Would you buy one? Yeah, I might. I like driving, but yeah, like that's a thing. Like, so if it had even with people, even option. with younger generation, they're used to the cars not having to park themselves now. So I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd probably like one. Leland, I would always want to have a manual override, just mm -hmm. just just because sometimes the computers get it wrong. Maybe as an option. What if you could take it like you wouldn't have to in the car and it could go like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be interesting. Be, it'd be convenient sometimes. I mean, believe me, sometimes well, yeah. it's road trip. If you're having a road trip and like oh, you've yeah. got another like you know. Well, we did that one in Colorado. Yeah, we did that. In, <laughs> yeah, that took. Yeah, I would it, was have a, loved. it was a twenty-hour drive oh, straight through. I would have loved to have that. That last. Why we thought that was three a good hours. Idea. Oh God, that was no. Yeah, you didn't have to drive down a mountain at midnight. I did. Which, which I just uh, when does when your we, car have any of those uh, safety features that we talked about, like the laser cruise control? I don't know. No, I don't. No, no I don't think doesn't. so. No. No. Um, but do we see the capacity for it to do what I'm talking about? I mean, do we see this playing out? Where these driverless like cars rid of come out, the and revenue like traffic cops, yeah, and just these things eating the um, the money that would otherwise go to the state. I would, I mean, probably. I would much prefer, I would much prefer to give my money to uh, probably because your car, you know, Volvo or BMW or Google for that matter, as probably. opposed to because like know, the cars, if they're, yeah, like I mean, they're programmed, they have the GPS, they're not going to be speeding on the road. Mm -hmm. It says something about budget planning uh, with, with these municipalities that they rely on X amount of traffic citations in order to yeah. actually balance Yeah, that's the why they don't want the driver. And so, I mean, yeah, exactly. This is why they have on that, like quotas they want... and everything else. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm all in favor of it. If it takes a, if it takes a bite out of, uh, you know, crime to, you know, uh, use that, then, yeah, uh, crime in the sense of, you know, the government is criminal, right? Um but uh, yeah, I'm all in favor of it. I think it's yeah. fantastic, and and it was interesting that nobody really was talking about this for the longest time when these things were coming up, and that was always like the big selling point to me. Uh, you know, you know, never mind that uh, you know I can take a nap in the back or you know eat a sandwich on you know whatever. Um, I was just curious about and, and fascinated by the concept of like I could buy a car. Mm -hmm. That I'll n never have to worry about uh, the police on the road again. Well, that's what the Mullis it, Sky uh, Car <laughs> that the guy was talking about for 30 years was trying to do was have this automated flying car. Mm -hmm. That's a why why limit yourself to just the roads? When they're you go they're coming the, up with that. But they've been talking about it since the, the 80s or possibly even the 70s. But so they're saying that that's actually set to release like 2015. Have you seen this? It's actually it's a flying come out. car. It's a flying car. It has. Um, I don't have the the article in front of me, but they're saying that it's ready to release, like 2015. So what it is is it's got. Um, it seats two, I believe. Uh, it may, might have been four, but I believe it was two, and uh, it has these two sort of shafts right on either side, and these giant. Like if you've ever been to uh, the automated car wash, right, and the thing spins. Mm -hmm. Doctor um, fans. Yeah, if you can think. Yeah, exactly. So there are these giant rubbery, you know, whatever the hell they're made of, uh, things, and they spin around, and so it's like a dual helicopter, like a little, you know, like that. Yeah. And the only real, um, and it, it takes off and zips you about from point A to point so B. It's, it's ready all to automated. Come out, like, it's all next, automated. It's ready to come out next year? According to the article. Well, like, is that going to be for public to yeah. buy? Or yeah. is that going to be private? No, it's it's a it's a it's for yeah. public. Yeah, people can buy that. It's not like a military thing. or. Mm -hmm. He's the Muller has been talking about this thing for decades. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking that Amazon is actually going to come out with this with their drones because it's the same. I think that's type fantastic. Of, same type of technology, except I think it's, it's, drone, it's, it's a drone, but it actually works. I think the drone delivery is just brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, this 
like, probably be more accurate than the post Well, because office. drones aren't going to have a bad day, you know? Yeah, drones you're not going to have... Gonna, they're not going to throw your pack at your door. Yeah, they're not going to, like, say, oh, yeah. I stepped in dog poop and, you know, she burnt my toast. Throw it out. You yeah. know, <laughs> God damn it, and, you know, slam your... You know what I mean? Like, because that happens. Slam your Christmas ornament. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Um, and so... Drone doesn't have any feelings. So it's not well, and I'm, it's the same thing with, like, the replacing, uh, you know, fast food workers with machinery, right? Um, you know, if you can do that and improve, then a yeah. machine can't spin your burger. <laughs> and, yeah, and exactly. It, and it'll get your order right, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's kind of a, it's interesting to see, and that's what I mean by you know taking that back by this idea that when I get up in the day and I mill about uh, and and go about my day, I get this sense of just a just a wild sense of primitivism that that exists around me. Um, it, when I, you know, because I think that there is this swath of technology that is bubbling and brewing right now that is going to take this world that we exist in now within 20 years' time and make it almost incomprehensible. Uh, we were talking about food hacking on the show prior, uh, this concept of taking food, boiling it down to the basic chemical components and restructuring it, and, and which I don't know if I'm for or against. Like a Star like Trek replicator concept. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, now we've got... Exact, well, there's the uh, 3D printing. That's just becoming kind of a big thing now, and becoming, and now they're printing food. Make food, yeah. That they made a hamburger patty in, in a lab. You know, the weirdest thing is, this is what gets me, is that, um, and and Abby, you know this. My 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 biggest pet peeve, second only to government. You got to know this. I've said it a number of times. What do I hate? Only second all, to government. Yeah, almost as much as government, but not quite as much. I don't know. People? She, <laughs> she's, I think she's. I, I, I get remember. the. I get the distinct sense suddenly that uh, all of that uh, time spent bitching when you asked me to fix your printer. Uh, oh yeah, was, you hate printers. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. I hate never listened to. I hate printers. They never work. Well, but I. It's interesting because and see now I know. <laughs> um, but uh, you would think that we would have gotten two-dimensional paper printing correct at, before moving on to 3D, right, and food and, and things like this. But apparently we just it, we skipped said, over yeah, that. the fuck with that and just like, <laughs> well, like, you know, like, what, print you a picture of a taco? Bullshit, I'm printing you a whole taco. Like, okay. We I got guess. three simultaneous webcams going <laughs> working right now, but gosh darn it, can we get the printer to work? Of course not. Yeah, it's, I don't know, and it's that built-in obsolescence largely, I don't know. Um, well, with the with the ink cartridges, that's fucking bullshit. Well, no, just with the <laughs> machines. There was a guy that actually proved that they had built-in obsolescence. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I just I do. I get the sense that it is this wildly sort of primitive conditions that we exist in today, compared to what will what we will have in ten to twenty years time. Um, I think. The, I mean, we see like flying cars right on the cusp. A digital. A singular sort of currency that is you know, that you can't touch or taste or feel or whatever that that you know is is there that nobody has control over that's all based on mathematics. Um, I'm thinking of Back to the Future too. Why is it we have fifty dollar Pepsi's? Where's my hoverboard? Where's my hoverboard? Right. Where's my flying car? Well, where's my uh, self drying clothes? In some regards, I think we're still closer to 1985 than 2015 in the, in the Back to the Future universe. It's almost like we're in <laughs> Biff Tannen's alternate timeline where everything is skewed bad, more or less. Now, we do have the big screen TV, so. There's oh, they that. have the TV. Did you see that? It will like mm -hmm. be like paper thin and you can roll it up. I saw that. Oh, LED. What? Yeah, an LED. Yeah. Samsung. It's, it's Samsung. They've like made like, yeah, it's like paper thin and you'll be able to roll it and like take it with you like it'll be portable. Yeah, they've already made a prototype. That is the weirdest. I mean, I I yeah, like it crazy. in the sense of innovation. Um, from the side that is very much, um, I mean, you know my take on TV. I just yeah, you hate TV. I'm just not a fan. I just don't care for it at, yeah, at I have all. To, yeah, I canceled the cable. So. Did you really? Yeah, because yeah. I more watch Netflix anyway. So I was just mm -hmm. like, why? What are you gonna do without your without your reality TV series? I don't know, cause I do like my reality shows. I do like those Housewives. 
they're so ridiculous, <laughs> but like they're enjoyable. Like they are, they're the first thing from enjoyable. I've right? watched them since the beginning. You almost gotta see like what this one's up to this week. You know, mm. who's throwing what at what dinner party? No, I just, it's cheap entertainment, but I did get rid of that, so good. Won't good. be watching that anymore. Well, you'll. I think you'll. You'll. Be, um, I think you'll have a, a little less in the way of anxieties and uh, all kinds of things as a consequence. That's my. Mm. That's my prediction. Uh, I'm calling that's it right now. That's my prediction. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. Also, yes. Um, but uh, anyway, I guess we've eaten up a pretty good amount of time here on 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 this one. Um, <clears throat> so. All in all, though, I mean the 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 driverless car thing. I'm I'm all in favor of it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can Google FBI brands autonomous car lethal weapon or something like that, and it'll probably mm-hmm. pull that up for you. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll we'll make a brief stop on thorium um, here for a second. Uh, so the world's first thorium reactor has been designed. If you haven't heard about this, of course, uh, there's been some articles that have been floating around on the internet. Uh, thorium. Being the what? What the hell is it exactly, Leland? Do you know? It is a radioactive element that was actually a lot more stable than uranium. In fact, we were supposed to use thorium reactors, mm-hmm. and, uh, and until the 1970s, I think it was Kissinger said, "No, no, you can't do that. Use <laughs> uranium." And, that, like and all and all the problems that, that go along with it, uh, with uh, meltdowns and the fact that thorium reactors are so stable that you can't overload it, that it's designed if you if it overloads it actually self terminates and so mm-hmm. uh, you can and it doesn't emit that much radiation. It emits about mm-hmm. as much radiation as a tritium sites on a handgun. So that's probably the reason why it's been suppressed for all these decades is its energy independence. Think about it. Uh, of right. all Entities that reported on this, the Young Turks, the Young Turks of all of all oh, people, was reporting on the geez. thorium car, and the fact is is that the thorium car can basically operate without having to refuel for I think they're seventy years. They're absolutely terrible, by the way. I know, but um, yeah, but even but you have <laughs> even Rachel Maddow uh, gets yeah. a couple things like like right about uh, Ron Paul before they, she turns against him, so. <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to watch. It, it, it's the kind of thing is that you have to uh, just read everything, even the stuff you don't agree with, because it's like you pick between the things. Because occasionally, the good guys get it wrong, and so you just have to see mm-hmm. what's what's biased and what's actual fact. <clears throat> so um, the so this thing with thorium. Okay, so we got a little one on one on thorium. Um, the article basically is saying here that. Um, I guess India has come up with this. They, uh, they've they designed this thing. Uh, it says it can operate for 120 days without the operator. Uh, that's four months without anybody controlling it. Um, and the reactor will actually last about 100 years. Yeah. Um, mm. So the, they're planning to come up with a, I guess, 300 megawatt prototype in operation by 2016 uh, and expand thereafter. They're saying by 2050, thorium should meet 30% of India's electricity demands. You know, it's you know, it's interesting with thorium is that I, I think they also use is these direct thermal to energy transference. In fact, they use this mm-hmm. type of technology with plutonium on the Mars rover. But mm-hmm. the thing with the Mars rover is it's going into an uninhabited planet, so it could right. be completely irradiated. That's just fine for mm-hmm. that, but the thorium reactors do use the same type of energy transference, but without causing DNA damage. And the other interesting thing with India yeah. is they got screwed royally in the past by old companies like Enron, mm-hmm. with, uh, uh, this power plant that just was a money pit that never generated a single kilowatt of energy. So that's actually really, really cool that they're going to be energy independent, and the fact they're also a non-aligned nation, meaning that they're not aligned with anybody. Mm-hmm. Is it? Can you get your hands on thorium? Is there? I mean, I know you can't just like go around getting uranium, right? It's cheaper and the it's like far safer. Yeah, there's it's safer and there's lower, fewer security needs to get it. So. So I mean, you could just give this to. Could you give this to like your your kid that's in, in, into like as a science project and just be like, here you go, build a nuclear rea- or a thorium reactor? I don't know. I don't think. I'm not so. sure what the rules are on that. You might get a it, visit it need, from need, someone. Well, it needs shielding, but it's like very, very minimal. Hmm. So you can put up like a couple of paper plates or make a little. Uh... It's like tri- it's like as much radiation as tritium. 
you think about it, I mean, tritium is a radioactive isotope in a gun site that causes it to glow, but there's no scientific evidence that links to DNA damage. It's I just, just I don't minimalist know. shielding around it. I just don't know what the like, you know, any. I mean, really much about any of that. But. Well, the other thing is it doesn't cause a meltdown. It so it won't explode. It so it can't be weaponized necessarily, and you won't hmm. have a Fukushima problem. I don't know why. I mean, it it boggles the mind, that, and and I guess ultimately it boils down to government. I well, mean, the, if if it wasn't if we didn't have government, right? Uh, it's in, probably likely that this thorium hmm. thing uh, we would have had reactors based on it. Uh, when did we discover that its potential for this? Right? Maybe you know fifty uh-huh. years after so- that. I think we've known it for a while, to be honest with you. And the fact is that these reactors can last a century. That means that if we had this thing... We already since, have just say, Well, besides yeah. that, since uh, we would have had the same fuel elements from the dawn of atomic energy, mm-hmm. and there wouldn't be any nuclear waste because we would have the, the first generation right. nuclear fuel rods still or whatever they, they, they use this encapsulate this, still powering the same reactor, so you don't have to worry about... Storing and this long-term uh, disposal of nuclear waste, mm-hmm. which is a huge problem right it's, now. It's just it's fascinating to me to think um, that's and that's part of what I kind of get on about in the bookstore when people come in is um, you know I, I they ask you know well what do you do I say well I sell anarchy right mm-hmm. uh, people mm-hmm. come in and they think that you got to have this much government or a limited amount and whatever. And basically, I just I soapbox, right? I mean, I try to get them to you know buy a few books on the topic in the process, right? But um, that ex- explains my points further. Uh, but uh, typically, it's kind of a soapbox thing. And you know, the whole my roads uh, argument, right? It's always my roads. Um, <laughs> That's always the default question. Yeah, well, who are the roads, right? Yeah. And my reply has been, well, you know, without government, uh, you know. Regulation and uh, in, you know enforcement uh, in industry, uh, particularly as it pertains to energy and uh, transportation, you'd probably have flying cars uh, by now. So what exactly about the roads? Um, that's typically kind of been my you know kind of go-to because realistically, you would you would already have these things some quite some time ago, uh, if not for the concerns of the you know FAA and. You know, uh, energy departments. Uh, you know, keeping things like thorium from you know developing and so on and so forth. Can I go off a little bit on the FAA? Uh, what the hell? Have I, as long as you include uh, the the guy. Um, what was the guy's name? Does anybody remember the lawn chair guy? The law. Uh, no, the I don't. Chair? The guy with the balloons. No, I don't remember that. But the interesting thing with the FAA is that there's a reason why. The planes, the single-engine piston planes, use the same engine technology from the 1950s. Why because, is that? Because the FAA is such a regulatory nightmare to get any bit of technological innovation to get approved. Any plane that is not 100% approved by the FAA is considered an experimental aircraft and is not mm-hmm. allowed into Charlie Airspace, which is airspace around smaller cities like the city of Austin, or Bravo Airspace, which is, is the size of... Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, New York, mm-hmm. you know, Chicago, uh, because they view the things as unsafe. And because it's so expensive to get these things regulatorily approved, bolts that would cost 50 cents cost like 20 to $300 just to hold the flaps on. Or the, uh, avi- a, or the yeah. aviation computer, where it's about as powerful as computers from the, like, the Pentium 2 from 1998 or the Pentium 3 from <laughs> 2000. But the That's avionics amazing. system costs $100,000, and yet it's much weaker than your cell phone, which only costs a few hundred. Which is one more reason why I prefer to uh, drive as opposed to fly, right? Um, that and the whole uh, sexual assault thing, um, which I wouldn't... Wait, what? Which I, well, the TSA. Oh. Which yeah. I wouldn't mind if they, you know, had the courtesy of buying me a drink first, I guess. Um, you know, if they, you know, got me a you know, couple fingers of whiskey and, you know, had a nice conversation with me and mm-hmm. got along well enough, then, yeah, sure, you know, knock yourself out, right? Um, I think... I'm, I'm kind of a whore in that context. I'll own that. Uh, but, I think those body scanners put out more uh, more radiation and thorium reactors. I'm sure they probably do. Probably. Um, so, that's... Uh, I don't know. It just... Uh, but that also, that reminded me the the story, um, the... Uh, I forget his name. I'm going to have to look that up. They made a documentary on the guy. And uh, it's just brilliant. Oh, the lot. Larry. Larry, I think, was his name. I think it was 
Ray the lawn chair guy. Wasn't it like he couldn't like he couldn't get a license or something? No, no, it wasn't even that. Or something? It was so much better. It was so much better right. than that. He. <laughs> this story. Because I remember I hearing it when I was story. little. I love this story so much. Uh, he, it's a, it's a classic American like redneck uh, tale. This guy wanted to see. I want to say it was NASCAR. <laughs> I'm almost positive. Yeah, it was his name NASCAR. is Larry Walters. Larry Walters. What Larry a great Walters. name! He that soared is. to sixteen thousand feet. Sixteen without an oxygen mask. <laughs> yeah, sixteen. No, no, no. This is what he went up with. He went up. In a lawn chair. Yeah, see the picture. With a it's ton totally of balloons. Crap. Get this. Yeah. And a dart gun, right? A a BB gun <laughs> and a six pack of, a cooler with a, like a six pack of beer in it. Because oh, was, that's the yeah the FAA doesn't let you drink at all. The what tickets if, were too the tickets were too much to go to the to it's the sporting event or the NASCAR <laughs> or whatever it was. And he thought, well, the hell with it. I've got a bunch of weather over. balloons or helium balloons or whatever the hell they are. I'll attach them to this lawn chair. I'll go up. I'll watch the. I'll watch this sporting <laughs> event. He didn't fall out. And then I'll gradually <coughs> descend <laughs> back to Earth. But he flew into a restricted airspace, FAA, you know, whatever. Right. And well, um, you have to have a transponder, ten thousand feet. And he got fined some wild amount of money. Uh, I forget what it was. Does it say in the article, Abby? Do you have it? It's, uh, Does it show how much see. he got fined? It didn't. I'm looking. It says it was an 82. A homemade airship mm -hmm. consisted of a patio chair and 45 helium-filled <laughs> weather balloons. 45, 45 fucking balloons? 45 weather balloons. 45 attached. fucking balloons. Holy shit. It was like... It Nowadays he would have gotten shot down with a with a, with a with one of those service to air missiles. If it was... <laughs> yeah, he's lucky it was eighty two. Yeah. Let's see. Oh god, he would have been labeled a domestic That's terrorist. I I think it's hilarious. I remember though. hearing I think it's that. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that you can just have this guy that just wants to see a sporting event. Uh, you know, just. I, I want to see Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was before Dale was like a big deal. Uh, no, actually, it was right when he was starting to get become a big deal. Big best name, uh, just a, a fun side fact. Best name in uh, race car history. Anybody know what it is? Hmm. Mm -mm. Dick, Dick Trickle. Dick, Dick Trickle. Trickle. That's a yeah. You can pull it up, throw it up on YouTube. Dick Trickle. You know, there's that a... is, and and he he smokes a cigarette while like through. He's got his uh, helmet on, right? And so he's got it on like this. Right, right. And you've mm -hmm. got a cigarette popping out, and he's just making the like puffing his cigarette and driving the the NASCAR. Um, I, I got one better for you. You know, there's a vasectomy doctor here in Austin named no, no. Doctor Dick Chop. You're kidding. No, Richard no. Chop. He, he's a real guy. Really? Yes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's oh, oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna concede. You won that one. Um. But uh, moving right along from, you know, let's just, how the fuck am I going to even transition <laughs> that one? Um, speaking of Dr. Dick Chop, <laughs> have you met Jibo? Jibo. Jibo. Uh, family home robot. Yeah, Jibo's making the rounds out there. Jibo is um, the world's first family robot, uh, according to some of the articles out there. It's built by MIT's social robotics master. And <clears throat> Jibo is a... You guys have seen it. I've shown you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can play the video. Um, I'm not... Because, you know, obviously, uh, Voluntary Virtues Network, we've got to be super careful with the uh, copyrighted material. And so I'm yeah. going to... I'm just not going to play the video. Um, just, you know, to err on the side of caution, I guess. Um, but you can get online and you can look at this. Uh, it's J-I-B-O, Jibo. And... I mean, it's making the rounds in all the news articles uh, mm -hmm. out there, um, from CNN to you know so on and so forth, right? <laughs> and it is it it looks like what would you say this thing looks? It looks like one of those small fans, right? Like the yeah, like a little the, mini fan, the kind of clunky mm -hmm. mini desk fans. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like the one. Yeah, like a mini desk fan. So it's probably about the same size. If you think about that. And then take the the face of the fan, right, and make it sleek, like glass. 
like an iPad or something like that. And you've got um, like a display on there, mm -hmm. and you've got speakers on it. But it's a three-axis. Um, <clears throat> it possesses three different axes. Is that axes? Ax or no, I guess it'd just be three different axes. Axes, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't think. Um, so it's got <laughs> Mises. <laughs> um, uh, so I, it's got three different axes, and mm. it, um, it, it. Uh, swivels about and it spins in 360 degrees and all this different stuff but um, I mean it looks like something out of, out of like a like a Disney movie or something well, like, like the Jetsons the, like yeah you know Rosie the robot from uh, the Jetsons yeah she was like the family <clears throat> robot so it's it's something kind of into that it doesn't have mm -hmm. legs it doesn't have arms um, it's it's no but it like it does like facial recognition mm -hmm. and it can read to you like it can read books to yeah, you, it, tell stories, and it like gives you messages. Relay, yeah, relay voice messages. Me voicemail messages and text messages, and uh, you know, order takeout for you, and all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's sort of this first generation, I guess, jump into um, smart home computers, if that if that's a thing that we want to call it, I guess, where. It will, you know, you can tell it to turn the temperature up and down in the house. You can, uh, you know, ask it to, you know, send, give it a grocery you list. You could ask to send it to your take photos. Or whatever. Have it, yeah, take pictures, take for, pictures you, for you. Things like this. Um, and then it's got the, it, like, since it spins around 360 and everything, you can have, like, a, uh, if you take, like, one of the Skype type of, you know, setups or whatever. And you can have the user, uh, you know, capable of sort of being in the room, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence with it because um, <clears throat> it's, while on the one hand, um, it seems absolutely brilliant, uh, the different things that it can do. It's, it's like 11 inches tall and probably has a 6-inch base here. Um, I'm on the fence. On the one hand, um, it's it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, this thing that can uh, you know communicate with, and you can talk to it, and and uh, it picks up on you know facial recognition and the the tones that you use and things like this, and it kind of reacts accordingly. Um, yeah, it can kind of have conversations with you. It's got a degree of AI to mm -hmm. it, also. Yeah. Um, so it learns more about. You as learns you, know. you and your and everyone else, yeah. Um, it's it's really a bizarre sort of step forward, and I'm and I'm torn on where I stand on it as of as of yet. Um, on the one hand, you know, uh, I could see it having a, a, a great deal of use, um, mm -hmm. being being quite useful. On the other hand. Uh, there is the concerns when it comes to uh, privacy, for example, and security. Um, and so there's there's security and privacy concerns at play, and um, and and I kind of have to wonder about that. Uh, you know, can somebody tap into tap in, it? Yeah. Is it something that's going to be, you know, subpoenaed? If or, it can be you know, hacked and yeah, exactly. <laughs> things like that. Like they do kind of now with like the Xbox Connect and stuff like that. I mean, they, or just your smartphone. Right. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they they do that with your smartphone, right? They have mm -hmm. uh, roving bug technology. Yeah, they can. Yeah, and on like your webcam on your laptop. Mm -hmm. So hey, I don't know. I'm I'm torn. Have either of you guys seen the movie I Robot from ten years ago? Is that the Will Smith? Yeah. Thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, not in a while, but yeah, I, I vaguely. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, with the. Artificial intelligence and the robots that went rogue, and actually the self-driving cars, which then locked you in. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's interesting that Hollywood seems to telegraph all different scenarios about this, uh, about all different types of future, whether it's dystopian or you know, anarchist, libertarian or socialist. It's actually really kind of interesting. And if you look at the video games, they slant more towards the anarchist, libertarian, like Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were a fan of Grand Theft Auto, right? I think it's a great game. I think it was absolutely marvelous. Um, hey, you'd spend hours playing that. Oh, it's a brilliant game. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, but, 
I don't know. I just when I see something like this, I can't help but wonder a little bit. Um, you know, where does that where does that take us? What does that do? Um, it's it's interesting to think. I mean, here we're they're 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 coming up with these now. Like, I mean, this is sort of a first run of, of your R two D twos, uh, or or whatever you want to call them. Um, of the future, and then it, in a sense, it's kind of what it is. I mean, he didn't move about, right? Uh, it's more know, of a stationary. Yeah, he's stationary. But, cool. but we're already referring to him as a he. Well, they call it a he because he's got a male voice. Yeah, so it's got a, to it's it got a male he. voice, but we're we're assigned. Yeah, you already to, said. Yeah, true. Yeah, they call Siri a girl on the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. True. And so uh, you know, it makes me wonder to what extent. Um, because we are coming up in this time where there's this interesting um, merger of technology and and the human transhumanism. Realm. Yeah, in fact, I actually talked about this on the last show. I don't think uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, um, but the and then there's that DIY transhumanism, right? There's that article I was talking about where this um, woman uh, takes her fingertip, she takes her hand. And she takes uh, an exacto knife, and what she did is she she cut into all the way along the edge here. Screw with the focus. And it, is it messing with it's the focus? It's always messing with the okay. focus. Mm -hmm. um, but it she cut along here, and then peels back the fingertip, the <laughs> the fingerprint the pad, ah. and places uh, magnets in there. And then puts it back and stitches it up, right? And now she can walk around and feel the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, I, mm. I, I, I can see where you're coming from because I've uh, seen a bunch of research where they actually implant microchips into nerve cells and they mesh together. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like this weird uh, bio neural uh, connection where you have a computer interfacing with uh, brain cells and nerve cells. Well, and we I guess we're, I mean we've, we've been doing this uh, you know, you think about prosthetics, right? Right. Um, oh, wow. We already we already allow for prosthetics and, and we, nobody has any problem with it, whatever. What'd you find? Oh, I was reading about how she did it like in her apartment. Oh, you pulled up the article on her? Yeah. Well, it was like with what, what? What was it with? What was she? Since I don't remember. Doctors wouldn't do it. She does it in her own apartment. Sterilized equipment using needles, scalpels, vegetable peelers with vodka. <laughs> and so she screams. Sometimes she passed out a couple of times doing that. You know, because oh, you can't. Well, you would. Man. You can't do that without because you can't buy the anesthetic to you know dig deep into the yeah nerves. Uh -huh. Ouch. It makes you wonder where we would be. I mean, if you because otherwise you could buy it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so, what would what would the availability of uh, things like that, um, you know, allow for? Um, you know, if if people could more readily sort of you know tinker with the self like that, um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and have the sort of things, you know, what else might they have done? You know, I mean, would we be running around with you know, who knows? Um, but it's an interesting it's an interesting concept to me, and I and I do wonder about sort of um, that that coming merger of the species and um, advanced sort of uh, robotics, I guess, and, and intelligence. Um, but you know, it also makes me wonder because this is something that is going to happen. This is this is this is fascinating, and I've held this contention for a while. Um, it's you know it is. Uh, you know, 2014, and um, what's going to end up happening is um, we're going to end up having sometime. If I die of old age, I'm going to have robot hookers in in my lifetime. Of course, you will. Well, we all will. Uh, this is something that's going to exist. Getting it's just a bit of a th everybody's going to do it. Well, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a it, it seems it. it it's obvious that this is something that's going to exist. Screen. Oh, is a screen? Yeah, that's what I was trying to. Okay, the screen. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I 
get this because you think about it, Robot Hooker, I mean, this is getting back to uh, Stanley Kubrick of AI. A lot of the sentient uh, androids were robot hookers. You think about it, you don't have any consequences, so to speak. You can't knock up a, ho- a robot ho- hooker. Uh, you can s- sanitize all the uh, all the uh, members, if you will, so you can't get sick off of it. Mm-hmm. And you, know, you can customize it to the ideal mate that you want. So I mean, they've already... Um... Yeah, they've got. Uh, I mean, you know, we think about yeah. sex toys, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a wide myriad, a number of different things, right? You can get, you know, whatever you want to your heart's content. Uh, and then they, you know, they've got ones, w- which is always fascinating that it's been, you know, more uh, geared towards, you know, uh, the female gender, I guess, rather than. And now, you know, flashlight comes along, and you got that, and then they've made advancements on that. They now have uh, blowjob machines. Have you seen this? Mm-mm. I saw it on Howard Stern about ten years ago. Really? Yeah. The bludgeon? They had that? No. Yeah. It's really? only recently. No, no. I saw it. On, I saw out. it on Howard Stern's show on his show we used to have on E Entertainment. It, it must be at least ten years ago, and it's like got this. It's this weird Amazing. vacuum pump, and it has a secondary tube where you're supposed to vacuum all the air out of it. No, it's it's that's that seems like it was some kind of pro. This is actually this is. This, they started a. They, this is a recent one. They had a Kickstarter for it, right? And I forget what the number is. Uh, do you, Abby, I told you about this. They need to raise something like fifty thousand. I want the to say. Auto blow too. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ah, Google. Um. Okay. So what is, is that? It? What does it say? Smiley machine that does it does all the work. Mhm. Okay, so it's like a masturbation tool. Yeah, it's a. It, Machine that blows you. Um, oh my! Look at that. And so, I mean, I do. I kind of wonder. Um, you know, it, obviously, man has no um, plugs into a wall. Qualms, which, by the way, when it comes to stuff like that, plug you in want the wall it to plug is in the, yeah, wall. the only yeah. the best stuff plugs into the wall, right? Mm. Uh, um, you know, if you can get a thorium reactor that comes with it, you're all the better off. Um, nice choice of words. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, bring it full circle. But uh, this is obviously uh, don't be a jerk. Uh, I see what you did. <laughs> the um, but obviously this is something that's going to exist. I mean, they're working on robotics. They're working on uh, these robots that can walk and you know talk and recognize human facial features. They're working on getting these things into the homes now. It's only a matter of time before somebody takes like a, a concept like the flashlight or the uh, what, auto blow two is that what it the was? The auto blow two. Which also, incidentally, they had a Kickstarter for this, right? This is the fun. This is great. They have a Kickstarter for this thing. I think that it was fifty k that they needed to raise, and they raised. I want to say it was close to like three hundred k. Of course they did. Like, you know, most of the Kickstarters in Indie go like they kind of fall flat most of the time, right? Um, but this one just like money just flooding in. Sex um, sells, I mean. Exactly. Yeah, no, it really does. And they got a lot of advertisers behind them, so yeah. Yeah. Everybody's it's, talking about um, it. Maybe we'll, we'll see if uh, I'll approach a flashlight next week well, and see you, if they want to get behind Well, you got to have the, fl- <laughs> you got the fluffers <laughs> union uh, going on. Did saying, you really go the there? Yes, <laughs> yes, I did. There's the not fl- a fluffers union. You mean like, yeah, the fluffers. There's is, that, is, what there, is, is there, that what they're called? Yeah, fluffers are the ones, ones that, that, fluff, that get keep you it, ready. Yeah, they keep it going mm-hmm. for you. Yeah, but the yeah, preppers. But, or whatever mm-hmm. it's called. Well, yeah. here's the thing. In we'll the, call it the handlers. Well, here's the thing in the Butter- entertainment industry. Yeah. Everything has a union or a guild or whatnot. So when you have this machine that can keep you up, there isn't going to be any need for a fluffer anymore. It's just it would be like, oh, here's my personal machine. I can, I, I, can, I can put I can put some uh, sanitizer mm-hmm. in, and there you go. I don't have to worry about. Some other living person who who knows how many other porn stars they're fluffing up all right. <laughs> what will become? There's going to the be fluffer. some. There's going to be some sad country <laughs> songs in the future, folks. Lost my job down at the fluffers union. Yeah, fluffing gonna... by morning. Ah, there you oh, go. Geez. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh. But. Uh, you also wonder um, because eventually it will advance to a stage where it's it's hardly uh, decipherable from the real thing. 
they, there was an article out today uh, that said that they have made prosthetic limbs that uh, most people can't tell the difference. Think about that for a second, like to the touch. Most people with these prosthetic limbs that they've recently come out with can't tell if they're touching, you know, human or um, or not. And they fi also figured out how to interface with the the nerves that are left over that they mm -hmm. can actually. Did you you saw the article? Well, I've 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 seen technology like this being developed over the years. I actually mm -hmm. want you know getting back to the whole dropping cable thing. Uh, it's been so long since I've you know, regularly watched cable. It was when the Discovery Channel actually, or actually more appropriately, the Learning Channel is actually, you learn something from it other than Honey Boo Boo running around being, being, <laughs> being whatever that is. That's hey, it, just show, it just shows you, you don't need brain cells to get rich in the entertainment industry. You just have to look at Honey Boo. There's some, some element of truth to that. Um, but, so here, I guess this is this is one that I wonder, and this is I think what I want to do with the show is um, I think at some point we'll open up, uh, yeah. we'll find a way to to get communication feed from uh, folks that are listening, either by way of Facebook or email or um, mm -hmm. you know phone or you know something Twitter whatever yeah like we've got to sort that out and maybe we can work on that this week so that maybe next week um, we can have that mm -hmm. you know two way communication, um, <clears throat> but I. What what of what of the individuals in the in the sex industry, right? You know, the oldest industry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what do you make of this? Maybe maybe not for this generation, or maybe even the next, but somewhere down the line, you're you're going to be competing with robots for this position. Yeah, I'll take that. So what becomes I, what becomes the last straw? The, I mean, like like for example, right? So if you have a job because what they get rid of the fluff you what? and, and no and you get fired right you there's always they bring out a robot no there's always in the back of most people's heads is well I can always go suck some dick for a living right and then there's, you won't be able to because that job will be taken is what that you, what you're saying like I mean like, does that mean that because the second oldest uh, you know, uh, you know, out there in creation does that mean like oh god if I lose my job I'm gonna have to run for office. Ooh. Even strip clubs. I mean, the thing is, is that why would somebody just kind of go to this thing just to see some TNA and just get their jollies off when they can just take a robot home with them? And have you seen them? Fun? There's a robot stripper that they're working on. Really? Yeah. I mean, right now it's like pegged to a pole. Oh, the thing that something. looked like. Um, but I've seen it. That looked like it? Lady Gaga. It was really creepy. That's wearing like a short little shiny skirt yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And... Yeah. I've seen that. I'll I'll admit it. I found it. I found it. Yeah, you know, I, it was probably the most disturbing, it's, yeah, it's, disturbingly aroused I'd ever been. Yeah, it makes you wonder what they're doing with the, those biometric information with the TSA with those you know, body scanners because they supposedly or these some uh, clothing chains actually do the same thing where they scan your body, you know, just to get an accurate representation. I'm just wondering if there's some sort of industry where they say celebrity sex robot. Fuck your the star that you always dreamed of of dating. You know that'll actually probably. Um, they kind of have that now, don't they? Yeah, they already have that. They kind of already have that. It's not a robot. I mean, it's like, not a robot, it's a, but it's like a blow up doll. It's or a blow up right? doll, or yeah, stuff of like, like that. You know, some any celeb, yeah, yeah, any celebrity really. They've got yeah, and usually it's like a porn star darling or something yeah. like that. Um, but uh, so yeah, no, Leland, it's actually a great point. Um. You know, the the they're gonna have that. Uh, that's a thing that will exist. Uh, or or having robots even instead of having the actual band perform live, use a robot or a hologram. They're doing that with Michael Jackson. Now. Well, they've been doing that at Chuck E. Cheese for a while. You Chuck, e <laughs> <You're> Chuck <laughs> E. Cheese. Um, I'm just saying. You know, it's not a bad little band. Tip your waitress, right? Oh God. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Uh. Um, I don't even know. Which actually reminds me, I'm thinking about turning that second room into a ball pit. I don't know if I told you about that or yeah, not. Yeah, you've mentioned that. I you told you about that many times. Really? Yes. It's either a meditation room uh, or a ball or, pit. A, or a giant ball pit. I'm, I'm not totally sold one way or the other just yet. It could be <laughs> both. It could be. Yeah. I would you feel can really, meditate in the ball pit. You I don't, know. I don't know that I could. 
You could. You just lay down, like back, relax. Yeah, maybe. Until he could. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. It just it makes me wonder. We're gonna have driverless cars and uh, robo hookers and you know digital monies and flying cars and I just like uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I'm sure Chuck E. Cheese will still <laughs> He'll be still around. He'll still be around, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but... And the band, too. I mean, it, it just makes you wonder, you know, kind of where we're going with all this. And, I we're don't know. Doing I mean, radio shows from a haunted basement? We are. Actually, you know what? I didn't even talk about this uh, when we got started. Um, you know, for those that, that haven't uh, listened to the show before, or haven't checked it out, um, it is... It's a bizarre situation because... Um, it's it's being filmed uh, or broadcast or whatever from a uh, literally underground, um, and it has a sort of anarchist, you know, libertarian whatever tilt to it, um, and it's situated immediately underneath a Chase Bank, uh, you know, and and there's Bitcoin mining that's going on and you know these kinds of things. <coughs> So it's kind of a weird. Um, there's, I guess, there's a certain poetry to it, in a sense. Um, you know, all the surveillance that's happening, you know, up above, up above and, and yeah. you know, they're putting it over the traffic lights and then the drones in the sky and everything, and then um, you know, the resistance, I guess, uh, moves under the earth, under the soils. Um, I'm sure there has to have been books of this, you know, that kind of got along the same tilt, but. Uh, I don't know. Leland, robot hookers, you for them or against them? I am very much for them. <laughs> Believe me, I am very, very much for them. And actually, you think about it. At school, they actually relieve a lot of peer pressure because they're going, oh, I can't get laid. That's like, just a robot hooker. You can pretty much get the same experience, right? More or less, unless you actually truly, truly, truly love someone and actually have like a deeper relationship versus just fucking them. So that's going to bring about a... So there's going to be the issue of can you marry a robot, right? Because Bicentennial go, <laughs> Man, that movie, that movie actually. Yeah, yeah, once they finally get over the the gay marriage thing, right, and they finally, you know, uh, hash past and the that. Robot thing. And nobody ever bothering to listen to the only people in the room making sense, going, uh, "Hey, uh, a should marriage be a thing? And b, if it should, do you really need a third party's, you know, like, a okay uh, in order to do it?" Um, you know, nobody paying attention to that, right? They no rights come from the government. And where, what about your taxes? Well, maybe you should ask them. Do we need taxes? Um, you know, but uh, you know, I don't know. Abby, what? What? Robot hookers. You know, I I'm sure it'll be a thing. That's not gonna be something I'm gonna invest in, though. You're not contributing to the Kickstarters yet? Are there Kickstarters for that? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can start that going. I, you can get it going. Why don't you? Yeah, because people would look at me and be like, that guy's not building shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll certainly test out when you guys are done. No, you will not. <laughs> you most certainly will not. You can give us critiques on it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's Write that them down. great, yeah. Oh God, that's when bothersome. she does this, it pinches. <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep at all tonight. Now, great. Uh, oh, that's just bothersome. That's just, <laughs> just plain bothersome. Oh, funny. Um, God, true. I wish I could play this video. I don't. I've got to. I've got to talk to um, some of the folks over at Voluntary Virtues Network and. See uh, what I can get away with and what I can't uh, is, as far as videos go, because I want to play that one uh, regarding Soylent. Um, as long as it's Creative Commons or in the public <laughs> domain, I think it's fine. I'm not sure. I don't, you know, I don't really know how to determine that one way or the other. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so the Soylent thing. Um, the robot hooker thing, though, I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you. I think I'm I think I'm in favor. You're all in. I think you? I'm in favor. Of course you are. I really do. I think I'm in favor. Have you seen the guy that attached the flow to like an iPad or something? I beg your pardon. Yeah, it made the new. It was. What do you got? Give it to me. I don't do remember about it, but it was like I didn't read the article, but it was something like he had attached a flashlight to an iPad, 
I guess like for what? So it would read to him or <laughs> Yeah, that's what it did. I don't know. <laughs> it did something. Let me find the article. But it was yeah, it was like he attached a flashlight to an iPad and I don't I'm not masturbated sure. that way. <laughs> I guess watching porn or something. So you don't have to turn the pages. I, I don't. I'm not sure how that works. Um, yeah, it's Siri read it to him. Oh yeah. Yeah, there you go. One of those Harlequin novels. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, according to this poll, it says nine percent, almost one in ten people would uh, would sex a robot. I would. Uh, that little. Yeah. Hmm. Really? Apparently we're part of the minority. I'm sure there's more. It's just not everyone wants to admit that they would have sex with the... Yeah, I guess You not. know, I mean, some people just aren't going to admit to it. I I don't see why... I mean, I don't understand why not. It's, um, you know... And uh, there was something I was going to look for in here. I don't know if I can show it off. Oh, that's time. what's called... It's the Flashlight Launch Pad. It allows users to... Uh, users of their flashlight shape to plug it into the back of an iPod to fully immerse themselves in whatever they're watching. I can just imagine Russ can... saying, saying that. So it's like a Teddy Rux kind of porn. Yeah, and you can like Skype with a friend and I guess like... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So do you have to change the cassette when it's done if it's the Teddy Rux bit of porn? I guess so, yeah. Please turn the, turn the uh, iPad over now. Um, but... Uh... That's, Please turn me on. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, it is a real thing. So that's there's, a thing. Yeah, there's the photo of it. What do you got? Let me see that. That's the photo. Uh, uh, what is this? <laughs> it's attached. This is bothersome. <laughs> uh, Leland, I don't know if can you I can... Can I see this? Yeah, I don't know if you can zoom in on this. Can you... Here, um, give can me you zoom in on that? Here, what I can do is give it back to Abby and I can switch okay. it to her camera. Yeah. Why don't you show... That is... Bothersome. It, it, it like not a lot bothers me. I'll hold it closer. I think that's. Here, let me. Oh, uh, it just screen just dimmed. I did that. Yeah. All right. There we go. Actually, pull it back slightly. Forward a bit. Kind of, here, let me have to screw up the filter it's, yeah, real it's quick. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> that. Uh. Yeah. What the. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's your home entertainment right, system. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's terrible. Um, but uh, you know, there's innovation for you, right? The markets. What if um, Jimbo would get involved in that? <laughs> Who? Jimbo. Oh no, I don't know. The family Probably. robot. Probably. Because he watches everything. Oh no, Jibo. 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 Jimbo. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is Jimbo? You're going to have dreams of, of the robot in the Jetsons giving you a blowjob tonight, aren't you? I probably. It's, uh, I've always thought Rosie had a, a you know hot pair of wheels. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, uh, really? so, uh, so that's what you're into. Yeah, All right. yeah, I've got a wheel fetish is what it is. Um, roller skates. Yeah, roller skates, roller blades. You know, sometimes just an eighteen wheeler goes by. <laughs> That's yeah. enough to just. And I get a ding. semi. Ding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, because yeah. eighteen wheeler semi. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, so if you enjoy a fine family programming like this, uh, you can donate to the Ryan Nixon Show. A uh, hundred dollars actually will get you uh, one of these uh, beautiful. Fantastic. You're not holding it anywhere close to the right area. I don't know. There you go. There yeah, you, go. yeah, you can see it now. So a uh, hundred dollar donation will actually get you one of these fantastic commodity discs. It's commoditydiscs.com. There's a lot more information actually on their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash commodity discs. Uh, and it's a brilliant, uh, you know, thing that's come up. Um, a friend of mine actually created this, and it is. Uh, uh, one troy ounce silver, uh, you know, the usual purity on it and everything, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, 0.999%, right? Or 0.999 fine silver. Um, and what's kind of brilliant about it is on the reverse side, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you uh, have a QR code. <clears throat> and you can go in, you can scan this QR code. I've tried it out myself. Uh, it works absolutely brilliantly. 
and you scan the QR code, it actually gives you the real-time value of silver uh, on you know spot price. Uh, I believe it's uh, via Kitco, and so you can go ahead and do that. Now, the, there's only a thousand of these that have actually ever been made, uh, and the order limit on them is actually 10, uh, so, or that's the minimum limit mm-hmm. uh, on it. So you've got to order 10 to actually get it. Uh, if you want to get a single one of these commodity discs, uh, you can donate $100 to the show. You can contact uh, us at uh, ryandixonshow at gmail.com. Is that right? Yes. ryandixonshow yes. at gmail.com. And uh, you can go ahead and inquire about that. We can get you all situated with the pertinence. Uh, we will actually take Bitcoin as well, uh, as well as uh, you know whatever else you got, Litecoin, Doge, uh, etc. Uh, I think those are really about the only ones right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, There's Tatiana uh, coins, <clears throat> and we're getting set up with that. There's well, there's a number of coins, right? Millions, millions. I say, uh, I don't know if it's that much just yet, but uh, you can get this coin uh, by donating 100 to the show. And that'll help uh, me to, uh, you know, situate Leland with uh, shock collars and, uh, you know, all kinds of whatever else. Maybe uh, a maybe we'll get you a shoe rack for you. Yeah, we'll get you in, in, in an auto blow, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or our own thorium reactor. Um, that, yeah. So, uh, thorium we, reactor powering a nice air conditioner. Yeah. We, which we need. Oh my God! It is like a um, it, a it's, sauna. It's like New Orleans in here in the summer. Um, I don't know if you've been. Where are the, where are the, uh, the drunken uh, sex robots throwing beads at us, if that's the case? You know, I, I don't think that New Orleans would be a great place to launch those. A, the humidity, and B, just the rowdy factor. They um, get rusty. Yeah, they, yeah, you'd have to have like you a go through the clear warranty. coat. And a, all you go through the warranty mm-hmm. process really quick on the thing. I would imagine. Yeah, you'd probably avoid it pretty quickly. I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating to think about. <laughs> so, uh, this week, uh, speaking of, you know, I guess we'll take a hard right here, what the fuck. Um, <laughs> so this week, actually, I've been, um, I've had a little more focus on, um, I guess, some of the more metaphysical stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, particularly we were talking about this earlier, um, things like the pineal gland um, and kind of the association with, um, uh, I guess, extrasensory perception, you know, psychic capacities, things like this. Um, because there there are a number of people that have this, right? And I think everybody does, is, is my kind of guess on it. Um, but... Uh, you know, some people, I guess, are a little more kind of tuned into it than others. And, um, but uh, I was looking at the decalcification of the pineal gland because, and if you're not familiar, I guess the pineal gland is sort of this, uh, one of the glands, one of the few, uh, right, that I guess is also represented by the chakras, which is sort of situated sort of smack dab in the middle uh, of the brain. Um, there's been a number of, um, and, and, you know, my, my understanding of it is, is sort of elementary, I guess, sort of preliminary. Um, but uh, there's been a number of different cultures that have kind of understood this. It actually, if you look at it, um, it's kind of an interesting thing. The um, Are you pulling it up right now? Yeah. Well, it's considered the third eye. Yeah, and it's chakra. considered the third eye. Yeah. Right. The um, if, you, if you can find a picture of it where it is sort of um, dissected in the brain, mm-hmm. there is, if you look at the... the um, that uh, the eye that sort of shows up uh, repeatedly in uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, right? It actually looks just like that. Um, it even, uh, if you cut the thing open, has this series of sort of like tubes and, and you know, uh, fiber sort of material and everything that looks very much, uh, it actually resembles quite a bit the, the human eyes. Rods and cones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it has a very similar sort of construct in there. And... Um, <clears throat> This uh, this is is uh, sort of it, 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 it gets the name pineal gland, of course, uh, being very looking very much like uh, the pine cone, uh, and we see this represented uh, throughout a number of different um, sort of regions, and you know, of course, we know the, the elites kind of into occult uh, stuff and things of this sort, um, but uh, you can find it even the Vatican has uh, this uh, huge sort of court of the pine cone or court of the pine or something like that, where they've got this giant, huge uh, 
the statue sort of thing of just this pine cone. Um, which, you know, kind of makes you wonder, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, following the, you know, lineage through, you know, Egypt and on up into, you know, the uh, present day, you know, London and such. <coughs> but, um, or I guess the financial sector of London, right? Um, but, uh... Have you ever been to London? I haven't. Uh, why are, you, are we going? Yeah, if you want to donate $100,000 to the Ryan Dixon show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that much. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll do, um, quite possibly, maybe in the fall or winter. Well, if you want to go by corporate jet and stay at the nicest five-star hotels, yeah, see, you would want to have $100,000 oh, to I do that. all that. That's, you know, I mean, I'm perfectly content with a Motel 6 or, or, or a nice bridge. if you. Um, the London Bridge? I heard it's falling down. In uh, Arizona, actually. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what are you looking at, Abby? What are you doing over here? I'm just looking about the pineal gland. What did you find about it? Well, well I was talking about like with how to decalcify your pineal gland. Mm -hmm. Because apparently, like, it heavy hardens. metals and fluoride like yeah. can restrict like the functions of it. Yeah, like it gets, psych, your psychic ability and things like that. It gets quite hardened. Um, there's a number of different things. I was actually there's a great video uh, on YouTube. There's a guy uh, I think called um, uh, what is it called Infinite Waters? I think is his name, and um, it seems like a pretty brilliant guy. It seems like a really good guy, and uh, he kind of did a video on this, which I found actually to be, and I've watched a number of things on this, but um, which I found actually pretty concise. Uh, he got into a number of the different things. Um, for example, of course, water fluoridation being a big one. <laughs> um, you know, and so filtering the water, pro filtering water, um, well, the, with something you, that gets fluoride out. Well, if you think about mm -hmm. it, our government water supplies—they're actually putting that sh in there in the first place well, with, like, with the auspice of oh, it's supposed to make your teeth uh, stronger. But in reality, mm -hmm. it's only what's well, topically applied. And if you read toothpaste, it says toxic. So the half mm -hmm. a second that goes past your teeth, and then you ingest it. As you just it bioaccumulates, and the fact that it also destroys your plumbing in your house, and municipalities are mm -hmm. spending millions of dollars a year to put this shit in there, and essentially all it is is just low levels of Prozac. Well, so, here we're getting uh, tax, I think, two million, uh, in just in uh, Austin, right? Um, for fluoride? Yeah, just for fluoride, which is a yeah, it's a uh, toxic, uh, it's a byproduct, right? Right. Um, and, you know, so it's cheaper to sell it to the cities and dump it in the water, right? Um, I think but Dallas think, think just of, got rid of fluoride. <coughs> Who did? Dallas. They just had a thing to get fluoride out of the water. I heard that. Are they doing that still? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they working? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Albuquerque has, Portland has. I think San Marcos just did a meeting at their city council. Are they that? looking towards it? To get rid of it, yeah. My attorney, he lives in Hayes County and gets uh, his water supply from the uh, city of Hayes, and they don't mm -hmm. put fluoride in. And if you think about most of Europe... Uh, which uh, a lot of the intellectuals in this country view as a was it more quote unquote more advanced society than than America blah 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 blah, blah. they don't, most of those countries don't flor <laughs> uh, fluorinate the water and here we have to spend hundreds of dollars to get these fluoride well they were a little closer to it with the origins of it of course the, the, the Nazis being the first people to start fluoridating but what about all the people that are prescribed Prozac because all because fluoride a lot of hydrofluorosilicic mm. acid is is low levels of what they stick in Prozac so those that are on psychotropic drugs, you have all this shit going straight to your brain and straight to your pineal gland and, mm -hmm. and just hypercalcifying. And you wonder why uh, people that are on it long term, they start going uh, batshit crazy because their brain's basically being calcified. Well, and there's a lot to, yeah, there's there's something to that. I mean, it, it hardens. There's ways to kind of decalcify. Uh, it's not a it's not like a permanent damage thing is my understanding. You can actually sort of rewind some of that damage. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the things, for example, had to do with um, a lot of it has to do with diet. Uh, actually, surprising not maybe not surprisingly at all. Um, but uh, meats, dairies, things like this. Uh, essentially, you know, it, it it's the same thing that it always is, right? It's uh, it has to do with you know the closer you get to Earth uh, and just you know whole Earth type of you know. Uh, right. Raw foods, nuts, berries, greens, etc. Mm -hmm. um, that actually aids the process. Sunlight actually uh, was another big one. 
there's this thing you can go out and you can actually kind of stare not so much directly at the sun, right? But kind of in that, you know, right in that orbit, um, you know, for five, ten minutes, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, for example, mm -hmm. uh, as the sun's coming up or as the sun's going down. And they've actually found that that helps the process. Um, <clears throat> there was, uh, so, you know, even just like not wearing sunglasses. Um, you know, that actually could, there's some, that could actually put scientific evidence to go to vacation at a, at a sunny location, like a beach, mm -hmm. and then you feel refreshed afterwards. Maybe part of it is because your pineal glands being decalcified. I would imagine uh, there's, there's something to be said for it. In fact, I actually tried it today. Um, I Usually I have my sunnies, right? And, uh, and you know, that's mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a routine. I put my seatbelt on. Yeah, I, you, you know, freak reach out the if glove you box. Have Yeah, I'll turn right back around, go get them. And I'll admit, it was, it was staggeringly bright uh, out without them. Um, but also, I'm sure part of that is, you know, the fact that I work in a basement underground. I do a show till one in the, you know, two in the morning, I guess, Eastern. Um, and we're in the southern United States, the, so we get yeah. warm tents. Yeah. yeah. And then you step out into, you know, the, the downtown, you know, city sun, right? Especially right after our rain, like we had today. Um, and so it's we're just all, all glaring. All the haze <laughs> I got, is gone, yeah. I got more sun uh, just stepping outside today than you know probably had in a while. <laughs> um, but uh, that, of course, iodine uh, was another one that uh, we kind of discussed. And iodine, um, mm -hmm. you know, we've kind of talked about that a little bit today. Um, our friend Gary at uh, Nature's Pure Organics, he does a great job of that. Uh, it's uh, According to him, it's the original formula that was created by Edgar Cayce. Um, Which uses and, kelp and seaweed from Australia because it's not affected by Fukushima. Is that where it's coming oh, from? Is that the sourcing? Uh, he's kind of got, yeah, he's kind of tight-lipped about it, but he tries to get the least mm -hmm. contaminated. So you're saying around like Australia hmm. is what he was saying on our radio show on Mondays. Okay. Um, but. Uh, Iodine is, is, is kind of a huge deal because what it does is it sort of acts as uh, a little bit of a shield when it comes to, and it also helps to decalcify, but it also shields uh, the body against fluoride when it comes in. Uh, the body's looking for certain elements that have certain properties to, you know, uh, aid it in doing, you know, everything that it needs to do in terms of nourishment and such. And uh, iodine and fluoride are actually fairly closely related on the mm, periodic table yeah. of elements, right? Yeah. And so when uh, iodine comes along and your body absorbs it, then fluoride comes knocking. Uh, the body essentially acts, you know, treats it like a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman, that, you know, they, where they just bought the same product. They go, well, no, we're all full. Thank you very much. And, that, and that's also the trick why you want to have good pure iodine because you mm -hmm. feel the body's need for it. It doesn't absorb the bad contaminated iodine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which is mm -hmm. what you would get from like a nuclear disaster. Um, mm, excuse me. I've been up. I, you know, when I when I settled in to do this show, um, I made the decision when I was uh, staying up until all hours of the morning, uh, sometimes until the sun would come up. And then there'd been a little bit of a sort of a life change. I tend to go on these little cycles, right, where I kind of get in a little bit of a health kick. And um, and that's what I've been on lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, I've been up since, you know, 7 o'clock this morning, right? Um, but... Uh, which which is it's been fantastic. Um, the but the the iodine thing, yeah, that'll actually help. But that that brings up the other point, Leland. You mentioned that uh, it also aids in uh, sort of blocking radiation, doesn't it? Yeah, because what it is is that our thyroid constantly wants to absorb iodine, and so if you clog up all the absorption ports with good uncontaminated iodine, it is less likely to absorb radioactive contaminated iodine, which then can lead to thyroid cancer and mm -hmm. other Oh, yeah, and there's a huge stuff. thyroid regulation thing that it does, mm -hmm. um, which is a huge thing in this nation. Uh, you know, my mom, for example, uh, has had problems with her thyroid, and, and uh, you know, they go to the doctor and they say, oh, well, uh, you need to be uh, taking something like Synthroid or, you know, whatever. And um, that, of course, ends up creating problems and so on and so forth. Yeah, for the longest time, we used to have iodized salt, which was actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, was it one of the few smart things the FDA actually did is recommend iodized salt, but they've since backed off on that, and they've used what, bromine salt or other things that 
are in the same family, which are not good for you. And, and the rash of not only with the uh, nuclear disasters that have been happening, like uh, Fukushima a couple years ago, mm -hmm. Chernobyl in '86, uh, Three Mile Island in '79, just the buildup of uh, nuclear waste. Uh, it's also a concurrentness of the uh, reduction of good iodine intake in our diets. Mm -hmm. so, something to think about. Um, there was. Uh, did, are, are you still looking at that article? Yeah, it also talked about like, yoga is good for decalcifying. That was that was the one I was forgetting. Yeah, yoga. Uh, apparently, that's real good. Um, yoga is good. Also, like raw chocolate, organic. Really? Did they mention stuff? raw chocolates? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought about I think that. Just raw anything. Yeah, the and raw stay away from meat and stuff like that. So definitely meat is like the one you definitely want to stay away from. Yeah, and I've um well because there is something to be said for what you're eating and it uh, sort of affecting you know I mean if you're eating animals that have kind of been through the process of you know torture and you know this kind of thing um you know from the perspective of the animal. Right? Corn fed uh corn fed cows will feed a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there, yeah. there's a growing Jack importance. Full of antibiotics. Yeah. You know, today, actually, and I kind of kicked it off today, uh, in fact, uh, meditation was another one that they recommended, and I'm a huge fan of it when I actually do it, um, but I've, I've found that it's one of those things, almost like the, almost like going to the dentist, I'll, I'll only get into it when, um, you know, at certain times, mm -hmm. uh, I'll only get into it, um, you know, Leland, are you on about the ghost again? I heard, I heard something upstairs. It's well. That's the bank, man. Maybe it's the ghost yeah, of J.P. Morgan. Yeah, I earlier, but yeah, whatever. Whatever. I'm not terribly concerned. Well, yeah, getting back to meditation. What about acupuncture and massages too? I'm what? sure that's good. I'm sure any like kind of Reiki, mm -hmm. uh, like that, you know, Reiki therapy where it opens the chakras. Mm -hmm. That would be good too. I'm sure. The um. Of course, you know, raw food like we were talking about. In fact, today, I um, on the way in... Yeah, you said uh, you went and got, like, almonds or something. I got... Like a Fuji apple and some... Yeah, I have, so that's what I've had and today. And a pound I had, of... <laughs> I had, like, just a ton of almonds. I don't even know... I mean, this is... It's going to take me forever to eat How's these. your digestive system with all that? Because that can... So far, so... I, okay. Oh, no, my system loves this stuff. Uh, it's just that I, uh, I abuse the hell out of my system when it comes to, I mean, for the last probably month or two, it has been, because in this general vicinity, right, uh, you're, you know, if you You don't have a here, lot of healthy options. No, no, my choices You've are like McDonald's and Schlotzky's and Domino's and, you know, uh, right. Kane and, and Chick-fil-A Chick and, and Subway and, and Jimmy John's. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, and there's, and uh, a burger place that's about to close down players. These are absolutely delicious. Is players going to close down? They're going to close down. That's a, that's a done deal. Yeah. Uh, the, the land is owned by the university. No. They, they did a blocking maneuver with the gas station. That's no longer there. Uh, players are going to be knocked down for a business school or something like that. And so they have like this lease back. You're looking at me all funny. Did you want an almond? No, I'm good. I'm sure. I'm good. Leland, do you want an almond? I really don't like almonds. How do you not like almonds? I, I have like almonds it. at home. I don't need any more. I'm good. Well, the, I already ate the ironic thing is that I don't like that many nuts, and nuts I do like are actually nuts, like peanuts. Like peanuts? They're not, yeah, they're beans. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not nuts. So, what was this one? Uh, was that Saturday Night Live? Was that what it was? Uh, it was such a long time. Since I'll leave you. I'll leave you something to talk about. The peanut is neither a pea nor a nut. Something like that. Um, discuss amongst yourselves, right? I'm um, I, haven't watched Saturday, I haven't watched Saturday Night Live Mike in such a long time. Okay, it's so the early like nineties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I yeah I the haven't gotten into it in ages. Um, it's really bad now, isn't it? I mean, just fired a cast member. I haven't kept. Uh, yeah, I haven't kept up. I with haven't watched. Yeah, ages. I haven't watched it in years. I think I think it kind of fell off shortly after like Deep Thoughts, you know, and stuff like that. Oh, I remember um, those. Those were always good ones. I mean, I remember but, flipping through the channel a couple of years ago. And I mean, like, let's be careful, too, because we're talking about, you know, them. So. Well, yeah, but it's just weird. I'm like, why is Keenan on this thing? Isn't he in movies? Why is he on Saturday Night Live? I'm just like, oh, click. I have no idea what I'm going to do with some almonds. Well, you know, you could uh, you gotta soak them. you got to eat them eventually, them. right? I, oh, yeah. I mean, I snack on them all day. You know, you can soak them in water overnight and then put them in a blender and have almond milk. And if you take raw almonds... You soak them in water. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, right. you can yeah, make I've your own almond milk. Like Are that. those roasted or 
No, they're no, raw. Just raw, so organic. You can, you can plant some in the backyard. Can't even talk about that. What are they? What is it? What is it growing? Is it a bush? Of course, the dog might eat. Is might it a tree? Get them. Almond trees? Bushes? I have no idea how almonds grow. What? What is it, Leland? <laughs> do you know? <laughs> how? Do I, grow? I don't know, but uh, if you have the answer, send it wrapped around a hundred dollar bill to the Ryan Dixon Show, courtesy of <laughs> <laughs> Brady Books. Um. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. It looks. Like I think it's um, it's kind of a fascinating uh thing that you can, you know, you can do these things and um, that you can sort of gain this degree of um, uh, I don't know what, what you would call it. Um, I guess a, a heightened intuition. Um, we'll put it that way. But uh, I don't know. I've been I've been kind of looking at that quite a bit uh, this week. I think that that's, that's kind of a fascinating thing and, and uh, it's a uh, you know, and that's I guess that's the whole reason for sort of the, the healthier eating and everything, um, which I guess my body I'm sure will probably appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, what do you What are you getting into? What's going on over here? Everybody picks like they he puts the camera on me, and then <laughs> and then we what? And then you both like pick up your phones, and you go on about whatever. It is. Are you like texting each other? I was looking other? about. Doing? I was looking about the tree. Oh, you're on about the almonds now. Yes, there. It, I, I'm just getting random texts at 2 a.m. All <laughs> so. almonds are in the same family as peaches. So if you've seen a peach tree, you've seen something very similar to an almond tree. You so know, it is a tree. What those? No, I had wait, to look, those are apricots. I had to look it up. It was bothering me. But it's not like a peach grows around an almond. No, but like I mean, what I the guess, hell grows around an almond then? I don't. A Hershey bar. <laughs> Yum. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh. Oh, no. There you oh. go. And this is. Uh, Sorry. Uh, oh, that's, uh, and this oh is, stop looking like that. And this is what I deal with. Oh, please, we deal with you. It goes both ways, or mm. three ways, however you want to put that. I'm not sure I'm really comfortable. With uh, that. You want to donate money for it. a real video switcher? That would. Um, oh you'll, get a, you'll get a free commodity disc for the process. What's that for? A, I don't for know. a real video story because it's it's just so. I mean, the thing is, they could they can make this so so simple because it's just software, but it has to be through this nested menu. You have to click it, five, go, pull the thing down, and switch it instead of just have the three things at the bottom. Where you just go, okay, one, two, th uh, three, one, three, two, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so that's... One, two, you're having three, a hard four, time. Two, I was waiting for... Yeah, I'm, just, I knew you know, were I'm just trying to keep up with the thing. What, like, me? Yes, you. It's going to start doing time measurements over here. So how's, <laughs> how is, uh, how's Bitsy doing? She's good. She's good. I left her at home. She is She's the... doing good. She's, you know... Mm -hmm. She hasn't calmed down. Like, she got fixed, but she's still not calm at all. Like, there's no change in her... She is a uh, absolute fucking maniac of a dog. Well, she's part terrier. She's she a is, Chihuahua terrier mix. Yeah, she's, she's a, crazy. She's, a, she's part terror is what she is. Yeah, that's a good word to put it. Yeah. For most she woke terror. me up at like 7 this morning uh, in my face, just wouldn't let me go back to sleep, so we got up. She's a terrible dog. Oh, you love her. I love her, but she's a terrible dog. She's, she's the worst thing ever. That's why I didn't bring her tonight. I was like, yeah, that's not going to go well. No, she'll no, go psychotic and you. bark and yeah. Chew wires. Chew wires, do all the, th make a big ruckus. <sighs> do all the things, right? Uh, did like you a read? Hamster. Have you been reading the book that uh, that I told you to get? The, the book that you told me to get, the one that I have. I told you. I've, well, I've told you to get a bunch of books. Right? Well, I have the book, the Alan Watts book. Mm -hmm. I've read a few pages, but I got busy with work and other stuff, so I haven't been reading. I have it like next to my bed to read, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't read a lot of it. But I'll I need to get back into it. Alan Watts is absolutely brilliant. I, I I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, I don't know what it is. There's something kind of charming. What the hell is that? Okay. Huh? About uh, about the way he does things. Mm -hmm. So 
Are you both going to start on that ghost thing with me? I yeah, the swear. camera just bobbled for no good reason. Yeah, I heard something, too. No, I'm sure. I heard something at the same... I didn't see it, but I heard something. <coughs> shut up. <laughs> Choke on an almond, you piece of shit. Hey. What? Watch your sass, woman. You watch your sass. Watch your sass. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't even start <laughs> the shit with me. But, um... I think we've covered damn near everything that I wanted to get into tonight, haven't we? Uh, we got, yeah. We still got the, about ten minutes. So. The Jibo, the Thorium, the, the FBI stuff, yeah. The automated cars, yeah. Yeah. The sex robots. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted Threw to get... that in for good measure. Yeah, the, I was excited about the robot to bring that up. hookers. Of course you did. So, the robot hookers were fairly exciting. Any excuse to talk about hookers is always... If I get the option. Robot, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, at any rate, um, well, I imagine we can probably wrap it up early. What do you think? Mm. We got ten minutes. Yeah. What do you want to do with ten minutes? What do you want to do with ten minutes? It's your show, you know that, right? It's ten minutes. You're stupid. Dark basement, full of ghosts. I got the both ghosts. of you. Ghosts. Actually, you know what? No, uh, if there's it's ghosts. Um, what? Let's if they want to chat on the mic, let's let them chat on the mic. What do you say? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Hey, ghosts. I guess I got to give them like. I think they can probably get right in. They, I don't think they need their own. Oh, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> this is. Just... You guys are convinced that there's ghosts down here, aren't right? You, you don't hear that stuff up there? No. I don't you haven't heard that stuff. That. This stuff's been going on for a long time. I don't know. It's probably it's just. It is not. No. Remember Bad when? Stuff. Remember when me and Noah we heard like someone going up and down the stairs and there was no one in the building. All the doors were locked. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think did that? That was not the air conditioner. Yeah. We. Yeah. What <laughs> air conditioner? Right. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. At any rate, um, I'm gonna wrap it up early. Seriously? Yeah, I am. It's, oh. it's the Ryan Dixon show, right? Yeah, but they're gonna have to clip it off or something. Yeah, I mean, just. You sure? I'm surprised. Yeah. You always have something to talk about. You don't want to keep going. Oh, oh, you know what? We didn't actually mention. We didn't even mention uh, that I have uh, See, that you got you go. set up with the twitters. And, and why don't you talk about that? What will The Twitter. I know that because is... you do PR. You, I don't. I don't fuck with Twitter. I hate Twitter. Um, okay. Well, the Twitter for the show is Ryan Dixon Show. Mm -hmm. Is the Twitter, and it's the same as the email account for the show. Do we? What else did you set us up with? What else do we? I have? have the Facebook page. I haven't worked on it yet. Mm -hmm. um, I need to get with you on that because we need to do some graphics for it, or maybe Leland can help with that, or whoever wants to. Oh yeah, Leland, did you? I forgot to talk to you about that. Do you want to work? Yeah, we need to do some graphics for the show. Yeah, I, think. I, I guess we I could do that since I'm kind of an integral part already, right? The, uh, technical directing this thing. You're here, we, uh, you know, and you, you do things uh, <laughs> oftentimes, so, you know, yeah. that's one more thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's Ryan, it's Ryan Dixon Show at gmail.com. Mm hmm. And the Twitter. Facebook.com forward slash. The Ryan Dixon Show. The Ryan Dixon Show. Okay. And Twitter at Ryan Dixon Show. And Twitter at Ryan Dixon Show. Okay. And then, uh, of course, we've got uh, commodity discs. Uh, that uh, you can get on board with again one more time. Uh, it's commoditydiscs.com. You can check them out on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash commoditydiscs. A uh, little uh, one ounce of silver. There's only a thousand of them out there. It's a limit, uh, you know, minimum on uh, of ten that you have to purchase, or you can donate a hundred dollars to the show. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that towards a uh, you know fine quality uh, family programming. <laughs> Talking about robot hookers and the like, right? Um, we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, But it's got a, a QR code on it. You can go ahead and you can scan it. It'll give you the real-time uh, values of silver. And uh, if you've got, uh, you want some more info on it, you can always go ahead and contact us, ryandixonshow at gmail.com. And uh, I think that's about it for Wednesday, July 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Thursday, July 17th, yeah, excuse Thursday. me. Yep. Thursday, July 17th, since we kick off Eastern time uh, over Halfway in through the month. New York. Right. 
Uh, we're going to look into seeing about getting uh, little breaks clipped in, I think, into the show. Just a couple of little things for, you know, commodity discs and uh, some other stuff that I want to include in there. Because, um, uh, you know, we'll have to get up and use I, the yeah. in a certain How, how we, we're going to be able to do this through the Hangout system other than just playing a camera? Well, in. what you could do is have someone do, like, a live read of, like, four commodity discs or something like that. No, That's what they call it as a live read. Just have someone come into the studio more or less. Or like one of us just do it while someone else wants to take a break. Like if Ryan wants mm-hmm. to take a break and then someone else just read about commodity discs or we'll get whatever. It we'll get it all sorted out, whatever the case. And then people can talk amongst themselves. But uh, you were you were on good behavior tonight. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it wasn't a huge mistake. It 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 <laughs> went, uh, it. It went, uh, and, you <laughs> was know, that, that's and all there good. was always a possibility that it wouldn't have. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, happy with that. What did you think I was gonna do? Like with you, there's no telling. With, like I don't know what you thought I was gonna come in and do. I don't know. There's no, absolutely no telling. Yeah, you were talking about that the other day. I don't know. It's like mm-hmm. really. But uh, no, it actually. It, I'm not it, that uh, it horrible. Well. Um, maybe we can have you, uh, you know, sit on sit in and, and uh, do articles and things like that and help out in that capacity. But uh, you've actually been, you've been really fantastic with um, the, some of the PR stuff, and both Thank with this you. one uh, and also show. setting up the other show as well, mm-hmm. the crypto show. Um, so uh, big thank you for that. You're welcome. And uh, a big thank you, of course, to uh, our, our good friend. Uh, what do I, I want to call you like Dr. Dr. Lehman Freeman. Something like that. <laughs> Dr. Freeman was my father, so... I'll call you Reverend Leland Freeman. What Reverend Leland? Reverend, except so I'm Jewish. I guess you're going to call me Rabbi Leland Freeman. Rabbi Leland Rabbi, Freeman. Rabbi, yes. Get a big hat. Give me a sandwich. <laughs> 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 On that note, folks, <laughs> that's uh, the Ryan Dixon Show for Thursday, July 17th. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, feel free to contact us at uh, ryandixonshow at gmail.com. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook and Twitter as well. Until the next exciting adventure, uh, you know, take care of each other and uh, take care of yourself. Toodaloo.